Hello and welcome back to episode 64, the second and last episode in the Super Color series of game and watches from Nintendo. Today we are looking at the unusual and somewhat unique game called, Crab Grab. This handheld was first offered for sale to the public February 21st back in 1984, and has a probable production run of about 250,000 units worldwide. With Crab Grab being given the manufacturing production code of, UD202. As shown here in the instructions booklet, which starts out with the usual table of contents, before the schematic image of today's handheld is shown labeled with all the major controls and characters. And that is followed up on the next two pages with the overview on battery maintenance and care, before a detailed explanation is given on setting both the time and alarm functions. In the how to play section, the booklet explains that the left rocker switch control, moves the player left and right, while the right hand control, moves the player up and down the screen. This basic instruction on the two primary controls is followed up with the usual point scoring values, and the various bonus features that this game offers. The section finishes off with the explanation on how losing a life occurs, or scoring a miss as they used to say in the olden days. The player, who's called Mr. Grab, dies when caught by a crab ascending the screen, in any of the four colored columns, and this is, perhaps obviously so by now, coupled with the usual three lives being available, at the start of this game. On pages 6 and 7, the infographic, cartoon strip style of illustrations, neatly break down how this game is played. The first frame shows the start screen, with Mr. Grab below the stacked matrix of four columns of demon crabs. The second frame, is actually a great tip, it kinda tells you not to push up a whole single column of demon crabs, you'll likely find yourself blocked in on two sides, with the crabs returning from the bottom of the screen. Frame 3 merely underscores that the crabs you push off the top of the screen, will return from the bottom, and rise up to the top once again. The fourth and final frame of the infographic, shows all four rows of demon crabs have been cleared from the top of the screen, this is the game's main objective, and is how you, as the player score the main bonus. With the caution warnings, hints and tips, being followed up by the unit's technical specifications, this rounds up our brief review of the instructions booklet. And as we stated last episode, the Super Color series of game and watches stretch to just two offerings. We've previously covered Spitball Sparky in episode 62, and today, Crab Grab completes the series. Nearly identical in form, Crab Grab has a vertical screen for gameplay, while Spitball Sparky was laid out in the horizontal configuration that better suited the breakout style of play. Lacking any wire stand, and having the battery cover at the top of the system also marks out the futuristic Super Color series as quite unique. The chrome painted case, and high quality silver metal faceplate, etched with the game's name all add to the overall premium feel of these units. The two dark red rocker style switches, have a satisfying click in both directions, that would be better reflected as a scientific, or medical type of device, rather than a handheld game, such as their definition, feel and accuracy. The narrow design that Crab Grab has, due to the long and tall configuration, and the limited choice for the control placement, would suggest an awkward and perhaps uncomfortable game playing experience, however, it is surprisingly pleasurable to hold and play, even for long periods, and is actually well thought out from an ergonomically engineered standpoint, with a nice center of balance, that has never caused me any hand or finger cramping or discomfort, even in extended playing situations. And as previously mentioned, the demon crabs are your opponents, they are quite detailed and impressive when examined in close-up, with menacing evil eyes, fang-like mouths and super sharp claws. Well, I'd like to narrate some gameplay for you. Crab Grab has an addictive vibe, once you understand the tempo and theme. Mr. Grab starts out in an aggressive manner, clearing the red, green and purple columns quickly. And by dodging a few of the early red crabs returning to the upper screen, Mr. Grab is able to get right across and clear the blue column, leaving a few returning reds to eliminate to get an early bonus. With the first round cleared, the initial matrix of crabs are reset, and the timer reverts to a 25 seconds countdown. With this second stage having crabs return in a faster fashion, the player swiftly eliminates the red column, moves quickly to begin pushing the blue crabs up, but then attempts to cross over to the left too early and is blocked by a static green crab. He successfully dodges the first red one, before being killed by a blue crab. After losing a life, the matrix, the set of demon crabs, is once again reset. Mr. Grab sets off by eliminating the far left purple column, before pushing up the extended green line. Sadly the red crab's initial formation is also an extended column in this stage, and is now blocking the player's ability to move to the right hand side. The player has to zigzag several single purple and green crabs as he tries to escape the trap he's created for himself. 
narrowly escaping death several times. The tension caused by switching to and fro, is what makes this game so addictive. So, with 4 or 5 moves back and forth, the player eventually gets into position below the large red column of crabs. Swiftly eliminating both the extended red column, and the shorter blue line of crabs, on the right hand side. The player, unwittingly perhaps, has effectively swapped sides for the trap he created for himself, when he was on the left hand side, he was blocked by the red crabs, and now he's blocked in the same fashion by the extended green column of demon crabs, but this time on the right of the screen. Now, perhaps learning from that error, he deletes only half of the green crabs, before focusing on the purple column. Then moving back to clean up the few returning greens, but unfortunately, while jumping over to the purple crabs he loses his second life. Well, due to time constraints, we'll round out the gameplay here, I'm sure you've all got the feel for it by now. Looking at the influences from that time period, we remember we had a whole lot of Pong tennis variants, and even more breakout versions, but, I feel that Space Invaders played a bigger role than perhaps Nintendo would like to admit. There's a similar shape alien to our crab, there's a similar matrix of enemies descending towards the player, our is ascending, but still, the big difference was really only the lack of shooting. Nintendo later licensed a panorama screen, Space Invader handheld, with LCD color technology in 1999. And let's not forget that Tetris was initially launched in 1984, and true, while the similarities might seem tenuous on the face of things, the gameplay has the same spatial dexterity to it that is more compelling than might be thought on first glance. And, let's not forget, in 1989, Tetris was that game that launched alongside the new and amazing Game Boy DMG01. Also, it's highly likely that there was a genuine desire, and from reports, much planning that went into a near launch of a game and watch, multi-screen version of Tetris, and likely this handheld was further along than just the early stages of production. Rumors have it that a few prototypes exist, but sadly this was killed off, probably so as to not erode the sales of the then new Game Boy. Later Nintendo would issue a liquid crystal display game and watch style of Tetris, but as a mini classic keychain version. Then, in 1986, or 1987, the program writing community that had built up around the Commodore 64 produced the only homage to today's game and watch, with a somewhat, sketchy version of Crab Grab. Finding advertising for the Super Color series of game and watch, is really quite difficult, but, here we see a very attractive Japanese promotional poster from that series. And I'm going to wrap up today's show, with a little montage of photos in honor of today's star in focus, the game and watch, Crab Grab. Please feel free to give us that thumbs up and like us, or add a supportive comment, think about subscribing if you can, but truthfully, what's most important to me, is thanking you all for being here with me today and sharing our stories.